What's up guys, it's time to learn some economics. I uh, hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, so in this lecture, we are going to look at the relationship between the demand for money and the interest rate in a graph. All right, we're also, that graph is gonna be called the liquidity preference model or the money market graph. I'm gonna call it the money market graph because it's a lot easier to say than the liquidity preference model, all right? Now, the first concept to understand in this graph is the demand for money okay and money does have an opportunity cost to it if you decide to hold on to it meaning keeping it in cash or just in your checking account as a checkable bank deposit now the decision process to hold money is the same process as the decision to purchase goods is the benefit of holding money greater than the cost of holding money All right now interest rates meaning what people earn on their money in this case impact the opportunity cost of holding on to money. So there's two types of interest rates that you need to learn and understand what they are. Short-term interest rates are interest rates on financial assets that mature within six months or less. So that's going to be like your savings account, a short-term CD, maybe a money market, right? Things that are, you know, don't take very long to mature. A long-term interest rate are interest rates on financial assets that mature a number of years into the future. So these are going to be your long-term bonds, and things like that, like a 10-year United States Treasury note, meaning that bond matures in 10 years, is a long-term interest rate. All right. Now, uh, we've talked about how lower interest rates boost the economy uh, in terms of monetary policy. This graph here is going to graph that for us, that change in interest rates. All right. So, in June 2007, uh, interest rates on a one-month CD were at 5.3% and interest bearing savings accounts were at 2.3%. Now, if you've looked at your in savings account interest rate, you might now be at a 0.2%. So this was before the recession, all right? And so it's it's much, much lower than it was. Now, it will eventually get back up to there, uh, but the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates low in the hopes to boost the economy, all right? And you can see how between June 2007 and June 2008, how much interest rates had changed because they were trying to prevent a recession and interest rates have gone down even further than that, all right? Um, Long-term interest rates don't necessarily move with short-term interest rates. Um, if investors expect short-term rates to rise, investors may buy short-term bonds, even if long-term bonds offer a higher interest rate, blah, blah, blah. Don't really need to know all of that. Now, these are the things that impact the demand for money, or that will shift the money demand curve, all right? Uh, the changes in the aggregate price level, changes in real GDP, changes in technology and changes in institutions, all right? So if the price level gets higher, that means that people are gonna need more money to buy stuff. If prices are lower, they'll need less money, so the demand for money will be less. Uh, changes in real GDP, if the economy is growing, people are gonna demand more money to buy stuff. If the economy is contracting, they're gonna demand less money to buy stuff. Changes in technology, so today it's much easier for us to transfer money between our savings and our checking. Uh, you know, if you've ever been in line at the grocery store and moved money over because you realized you were going to be short on what you needed to buy, that's an example of technology helping you not have to have as much cash on hand. All right, and institutions are just different rules that banks have in terms of how they can operate. Now, the money demand curve looks like this. And this is going to be the start of our graph. So you're going to draw that on that first graph on the left side. So on our y-axis, we have our nominal ooh, interest rate all right and from this point forward I'm just gonna write in I R okay on the x-axis you're gonna have your quantity of money now, this should look like a supply and demand curve to a certain extent, all right? Um, our demand for money, which we're going to label as MD, all right, is going to be downward sloping just like a demand curve in a supply and demand graph, all right? Now, the reason why it's downward sloping is because the lower interest rates get, the more demand for money there's going to be because there's no sense in you keeping your savings account because you're not going to bank any money. If interest rates are higher, you're going to put more of your money in your savings account, so there's going to be less money available. All right. Now, increases and decreases in the demand for money 
you do not have to draw this. Save that other graph for when we put everything together. Alright, so we've got our money demand here. Just like in our spine demand graph, if the demand for money increases, that'll be a shift to the left. Or a shift to the right, I'm sorry. And if the demand for money decreases, that will be a shift to the left. Alright. Now, one other thing that we have to think about in this model, all right, the, it's called the liquidity preference model or the money market graph. Like I said, I'm going to call it the money market graph. Uh, the interest rate is determined by the supply and the demand for money, all right. The money supply curve shows how the nominal quantity of money supplied varies with the interest rate, all right. So this is what you're going to draw on the second graph that you have right there, all right. We're going to start off the same way. We've got our nominal interest rate there we've got our quantity of money there and we've got our money demand curve all right now I want you to think to yourself who sets the money supply who controls it I'll give you two seconds to think about it if you thought the Federal Reserve you were correct if not maybe go back and review some stuff all right but the supply of money is a fixed amount so before our supply curve was upward sloping. However, in the money market graph, our supply curve is just going to be vertical, all right, because it's a fixed quantity right there. It will not change unless the Federal Reserve does monetary policy to change the money supply. All right, now. All right, and we're gonna label our interest rate one as R1, and label our quantity as Q1. Okay, now, if the Federal Reserve increases the money supply through expansionary monetary policy, all right, shifts that to the right, you'll notice interest rates go down. Right, you see that? That's what encourages people to borrow money. Remember, we did the whole drawing with open market operations, and people were happy because they got to buy boats and cars and all that other fun stuff. If the Federal Reserve does not want to increase the money supply, right? They will shift. If they want to decrease it, then they will shift it to the left. All right, and that's what it will look like there. So we'll go up. All right. So next module, we're going to look at the market for vulnerable funds, which is slightly different, uh, but that's kind of the gist of what you need to know here. That's three for this graph. All right. If you have any questions, write them down, and we'll answer them when you get back.